I'm Daryl Granger, and I have acted as director, editor, and overseen all technical elements of the film you're about to see. Over the past month and a half, senior students, staff members, and members of the community have all been involved in the film. Although none of the actors can be considered professional, they all gave it the best shot in order to make this a great success. Although much of the film seems dangerous, proper precautions were taken with required authorization to ensure safety for all the stuff. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the film you're about to see. And thanks for coming up. to my records all day with big ambitions of when I could play my parents taught me what life was about so I grew up the type they wanted yeah. they said my friends were just an unruly mom hi and welcome to this evening guys my name is and I'm your first leader I see that we have a few new faces around us this evening maybe we should start by introducing them me? Yes, and maybe you could start by giving us your name and perhaps why you decided to join us this evening. Well, my name is Brian, and the reason I'm here is because last Monday when I was cruising around in my car, I saw a few chicks sitting on the corner and rolled down my window to wave at them, and the whole group started laughing, and I just couldn't figure out why until, until... Until what, Brian? Until I looked at my hair in the rearview mirror. <gasps> Now, let's all give Brian a big Bad Hair Day support salute. It takes an awful lot of courage to stand up and say what Brian just did. And, well, we, we just want you to know that, well, we'll always be here for you, Brian. And now for our next newcomer. Well, my name is Keith, and everyone calls me Bean, and I really don't know why. Maybe it's because my head. Well, that's great, Mr. Bean, but the I don't really know why they call me what they do support group is, is down the hall. Oh, yeah, right. Well, most days, I just don't know what to do with this mop, and sometimes I feel like wearing really tacky shirts to draw people's attention away from my hair. Sometimes I feel like shaving my head. No, no, Mr. Bean. I really don't think you should do something so drastic. We're all here for you, and I think that we should all give Mr. Bean a big Bad Hair Day support salute. Everybody now, come on! <laughs> now, on our way to the next newcomer of the evening, what's your name, miss? My name's Renee, and I'm an alcoholic. No, no, that's Tuesday! Right. My name's Renee, and I have bad hair. Yeah, yeah, tell them about Cosmo. I wrote in to Cosmo, and they told me to come here that you were the best. Well, our friends at Cosmo do tend to exaggerate just a little, but, but thank you very much for sharing your very touching story with us. Well, now that everyone has been introduced to all the newcomers, maybe we could, you know, talk to the regulars, and maybe they could tell us about, you know, what's been happening in their life this week. Well, I think Carrie has a story for us. No, I don't think so. I think Bobby Ann has something to say about last Saturday night, don't you, Bobby Ann? No, I don't. You have the story about Thursday. Yeah, well, your whole life is one big bad hair day. Ladies, please, we're not here to fight. We're just here to, to tell our stories and and to share our problems with others who just can't get their hair to cooperate. I would like to report to the group as your member who is tonsorially challenged that I haven't had any problems this week. You got no hair, you got no problem. 
There, you see, your hair isn't always your enemy. Sometimes it does what you want it to, when you want it to. I started to notice this good fortune once I started to use this new product I saw on TV. Hey, you seen that Kenny Jakir lately? Yeah, man, holy back, back, way back. Hey, at least he doesn't use a size six ball like uh, Jerry Miller. Yeah, man, holy Tupperware. <laughs> that is absolutely gross. I've never heard of anything more disgusting in all of my life. Now, now, children, let's not start this name-calling thing again. We all know what happened the last time. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't feel like getting my head shaved again. <laughs> that was hilarious. You should have seen the look on your face when you finally woke up. Ah, uh, shut up! Who are you telling us shut up, Lord Brain? You stupid ninny. Well, if she's a ninny, then you're a... You're a... You're a bonehead! A bonehead? Ha! You morons can't do any better than that. Nice hair on you. Well now, session's over, and I hope that this week has been really helpful to all of you, especially to our newcomers. Wow, this is really great. Thanks for all your support, everyone. it's a tough one. Every muscle in your body will be working, every bone striving, and every thought process available to you will have to work. We're going to climb hills and walk on water. You will sweat blood, cry tears. By the time this mission is accomplished, you will wish you never laid eyes on. What's the mission? The mission? 
The mission is to get the game plan. What game plan? The enemy's game plan for the Norfolk Bowl. Where is this game plan? It's a place not far from hell. It's Valley Heights. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know, Coach. No one's ever tried this before. We'll all die. Not Valley Heights, Coach. Come on, no, no. Come on, we're going to die, Coach. Not Valley Heights, Coach. No, we're all going to die. Not Valley Heights. Pull yourself together, man. You've got a country to defend. A football team to honor. We will win. We will conquer. That's the attitude. Now let's get started. Each of you set off on your own path to capture the plan. It'll be tough. Some will win, some will lose. Be strong. Let not the obstacles of the land be your boundaries. This team will self-destruct in less than five seconds. We will conquer. We will win. No boundaries, <laughs> sir. We're the fastest man in the game. One, two, three, three!
Marks and a chocolate milkshake, please. Sure, I'd love it. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Rescue 911. Today's features include the importance and safety of using sharp pencils and what to do if you've been caught without your hall pass. But first, a remarkable story of a girl's bravery in an almost fatal incident. The story takes place in the east wing of Delhi District Secondary School. Lillian Upstuck, a grade 13 student here, was on her way down the corridor to her locker. She opened it up and put her cosmetics bag in her locker. As she blotted her lipstick, an unseen bully charged past her and shoved Lillian into her locker. Seeing that it was fourth period class and all, the students were all diligently working in their classes, not wandering the halls. There was no one to rescue this innocent victim of a cruel joke. <laughs> Lillian used her personal resources. After minutes of searching, breaking several nails, and bruising her elbow, she managed to locate her cellular phone. Lillian was a girl who was always very prepared. If you needed a brush, lipstick, anything, she'd have it. I don't think anything could have prepared her for this. I'm just glad I brought her a cellular Christmas. Here's the actual phone conversation between Lillian and the rescue dispatch. Rescue 911. My name is Lillian. I'm locked up in my locker and I want help now. I'm timing you. All right. Just try and remain calm. Is the victim breathing? I am the victim. Are you breathing? Listen, you underpaid service worker. I'm trapped in my locker and I want out immediately. Where is your locker located? Locker 2223. It's the deluxe locker with shelves, mirror, and a shoe rack inside. Okay, could you please stay on the line? If you're putting me on hold, you can just forget about it. Do you have any idea who you're talking to? Rescue dispatch to Weed Pete. Are you there? Yeah. There's a Code 41 in action at DDSS, and you are the closest authority. A drug bus? <laughs> Not at Delhi. Darn, I never get the weed cases. There's a girl trapped in her locker in the east wing, locker number 2223. Two, two, Hurry, she doesn't sound too impressed. 
How do I get there? Of course, you sure map in the glove department. Why would it be in there? I put my weed in there. I mean, the confiscated stuff. Uh, forget it. I'm on my way. Officer Pete arrived at the scene in only a mere 72 minutes, a personal record for him. When he arrived at the scene, he found nothing but confusion. Was it 3222 or 3232 or 2323? Can't be that one. That's where I put my weed. Because he couldn't find the locker he needed to locate, he did the only thing he thought logical. He went to the bathroom and then to his car to try and relocate his assignment. It's only a girl. I need my coke first. Lillian! 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 Yeah. Thanks for nothing. Next time I need help, I certainly won't call 911. I'll call Domino's Pizza Delivery. The Volkswagen Golf. Back with lights. Comes with double ABS. Almost always braking system. And an open opening gas cap. With two side mirrors and four times. Don't have to worry about rust. It comes already with it. The dashboard is removable for easy access of engine and for cleaning and it has a working horn <laughs> ah, there we go it also comes with a vanity mirror you could have got beautiful models to pose and spread themselves for a car like this but look at it look at it who'd want to what a piece of junk this has been our latest attempt at Volkswagen to sell this two-door hunchback. Here at Volkswagen, we're doing stuff. Go 
front. Baron in front. Ready? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Cut. Do it again, quick. Let's go. I know, I know. Ready? Five, four, three. I'm going to tell you what, what kind of that jersey. You really are number one. Action! In nine, and technology is advancing at a rapid pace. Because of this factor, the art of time travel has become a reality. It has been both perfected and successful. Our story centers around a young man named Jesse, who has decided to alter the shape of his destiny. To do that, he must travel back in time 15 years to the year 1994 and acquire his lost football jersey from his old high school sweetheart, Sarah Connor. Unknown to Jesse, others aware of his plans and falling right behind him. Closely after him is the evil F-1000, who remembers that Jesse owes him a writing assignment from 15 years ago and means to collect it, or serve some other form of punishment such as eternal dish duty. If this happens, Jesse will not be able to get the jersey back and subsequently cannot alter his life for the future. Luckily for Jesse, he will not have to fight this battle alone. Behind the F-1000 follows an adversary, a secret weapon, fighting for good against evil. He is the Ibanator.
Pardon me, miss. Yes? Have you seen this boy?
I did not. And a commendable one, too. I feel like a fool now. That makes everything different. Don't worry about that, son. The 5,450 writing assignments you wrote over the last 15 years. That's okay. That saves me from hand cramps now. Well, looks like my job's done. Time to go back to Sarah. Hasta la vista. I'm glad you're okay, Jesse. It's been a long day, huh? Trust me, I need a vacation. I need to sit down and absorb all this to make sure that I'm not crazy. Well, you'll have a hard time trying to convince everybody you're not crazy if you tell anybody. Sarah, I'm telling you, you cannot tell anybody about this. They're gonna think you're turning some psycho hose beast. Now we have to get back to our own time now. Let's go. I guess I better give you this. Here, take this. I, you deserve it more than I do. Thanks a lot for saving my butt out there. I never knew someone who took so much strength and drive into what they do. You really are number one. What's wrong with your eyes? Nothing. I guess it really was time to retire that jersey, because you really are number one. Sorry.